So um, the next uh, alliance maker, coalition builder here um, is uh, Bert Barrow from the A. Philip Randolph Institute and also secretary of the NAACP New Bedford chapter. So we definitely have New Bedford in the house today. Um, I hope you folks can hear me. I'm getting over a bit of a cold. Um, so I actually come through here as a, a member of Unite Here, uh, at the labor union. I'm the president of the New England region. I've been president of that region since the uh, early 90s and a member of that union for over 40 years. Um, my aha moment was I was at an international convention and this woman delegate, a woman, of, a black woman got up and challenged the board or the leadership of our international union to say, we have, un we have contracts that have non-discrimination non clauses in them that try to create a fair and equal workplace yeah. when it comes to all That's workers, something. no matter what you look like or where you come yeah. from. But yet we go back these into our communities yeah. and yeah. we have these challenges. The and the so day. they it's created the a mandate to create a civil rights department, which yeah. then yeah. folks yeah. rallied yeah. around. Yeah. And somehow, yeah. don't ask me yeah. how, yeah. I was designated the civil rights designee for New England, you know what I mean? But just so you know, just my personal history, I'm not originally from the United States. I came over as, as a six-year-old child from parents immigrating from the Azores. And as you know, there's a huge Azorean diaspora within the Fall River, New Bedford area. And I grew up in Fall River. Um, a single mom, seven children, had to work right out of high um, leave high school to go to work at 16, worked in a union shop. And so with that history, um, I then realized that a union was much more than this provincial piece of like enforcing a contract in the workplace because obviously you have to leave and then go back to your community and then you're dealing with those challenges. And so the the membership was challenging this international leadership and one of the things that was really clear was that that leadership did not reflect its membership i came from a union i come from a union that's still predominantly immigrant predominantly especially now majority people black and brown people you know what I mean? And, uh, and so that leadership didn't reflect that at all. And so uh, one of the things they mandated, because like Lisa said, we have these challenges with the structures and the, and the, um, and the what do you call um, and that these unions have, you know, especially with their cultures, that that yeah, had to change. And so it was the swell of the membership that was asking for this change. And then so they made mandates that people get involved in community groups because when the community benefits, all workers benefit, you know, because it should spill out from a good contract to a good community. And so then I immediately just on my own joined the uh, NAACP, uh, New Bedford Branch. Um, I also became active in the A. Philip Randolph Institute. I'm the treasurer of the, the, the Greater Boston Branch and have always been active in trying to build the bridge because we realize as union members that when you're a union member, you just do better. You know what I mean? And I saw it personally within my own house because I have six siblings and the ones that worked union were just a little bit more stable. They had that, they had that safety net. They were able to like purchase a home much easier, you know, because they were making um, a living wage that had fringe benefits of, you know, all of the things that we take for granted, like healthcare and all that other stuff. And so that became really important. And so, um, and we've learned that at times we can work with different community groups and co build coalitions, that, but we don't necessarily have to work together all the time because sometimes there are issues that are a little gray and make conflict with cultures of groups and or whatever the issue is. But when we can come together, we should always work together because we know that when we work together, everyone wins. And so if we're going to uplift and support our workers, just based on the contract, we need to do the same in our communities, even though, you know, especially those communities are really disenfranchised and marginalized uh, based on economics, based on race or whatever, you know what I mean? We all know our area and what we're living in. 
Excuse and so us. for me, me, also the most important thing no, was that um, I'm at the end of the spectrum. I'm on my last term. I'm, I'm not Sorry, running again. I'm being totally honest. I'm not running again. But when I went in in 1990, our board in New England didn't reflect the membership. And so I made a sort of like a subliminal conscious decision that that was something that I was going to work at to make sure that it became reflective. And so that when I leave, that that board looks and represents its members more than it did that when I came in. And so having been on a board that used to be all white, one white woman, I will be leaving with a board that is uh, four women, four men, and of the complex of the eight, that four are minorities. And so I think that as we do the work that we do, that we really be conscious and deliberate about what it is, that we're just not doing it to do it, but we're doing it to sort of make change. And I'll be honest with you, this is 1990. That was 33 years ago. It took me 33 years of like just patience and just being deliberate and bringing people on and reaching out and seeing, you know, where people brought something to the table that they could get on board and so that it was really representative so that when people came into a meeting, when we meet twice a year as a region in New England, that when people sat there, they could see themselves and see the potential and the opportunity that they could make a difference in their community, in their labor movement, in, in their neighborhoods. Thank you.